Hey there, my name is Drew Brashler, and in this video, I'm going to be showing you about the latency involved with Waves Super Act Performer and your Behringer Wing. If you're brand new to my channel, I'm all about helping you feel more confident in your production gear no matter where you're starting from. So let's go ahead and dive in. Now, latency is going to happen anytime we're going to be taking an audio signal out of the Behringer Wing and back into the Behringer Wing. This can happen with an analog output, this can happen with a digital output. Anytime that you're adding in another piece of digital gear like this, we are going to be adding latency. Now that latency adds up over time and that can sometimes be distracting for the musicians that are up on stage, especially if they have in-ears. But if you can keep the latency small enough, then we won't have issues using in-ears and we definitely won't have issues running front of house or even broadcast with this. And I'll explain that here in a little bit. But I have Wave Super Act Performer pulled up right here and we can see that I have my Behringer Wing as my device we have my sample rate set at 48,000 hertz, and then we have our buffer size. So the buffer size is basically like taking your audio and chopping it into chunks, and it's going to be on this conveyor belt that's moving. And the amount of audio that it can process in one little chunk can be the latency time of that audio. That's easy. That's kind of the easiest way that I can explain this. So the larger the chunk, the longer of time it's going to take Wave Super Act Performer to process that audio and spit it back out to the Behringer Wing. The smaller the chunk, the faster it's going to be. However, one downside of using a small buffer that has the least amount of latency is it's going to be tasking your processor. So you definitely have to have a powerful computer, say a brand new Mac or a brand new i7 or something like that. Basically, the better of the computer that you can get for processing, the better latency that you're going to get because you can run these small buffer sizes. If you have an older computer, you're probably going to have to be using a larger buffer, which means that it's going to task your processor less, but it's going to add in a little bit more latency. But don't get discouraged quite yet because I'm going to show you the numbers here on Wave Super Act Performer with using the Behringer Wing on the USB output. So if we go and select a buffer size of 32, the latency is 5.79 milliseconds. So that's what I measured with my audio coming from this console out to Waves back to this console, and I used Rational Acoustics Smart version 8 to be able to do all of these measurements. But for a buffer size of 32, it was just shy of 6 milliseconds. Now, 6 milliseconds is the amount of time, roughly, that sound travels about 6 feet. So we can imagine that if you put a monitor 6 feet away from you and you were li to listen to it, the latency that you're hearing between that monitor and you is six feet or about six milliseconds. Now, I don't want to get too far into the speed of sound, but we can just, for this video, talk that speed of sound travels one foot for every millisecond. Now, I know that that's a very rough number, so please don't get mad at me for all of you people who are doing the math really quick right now. We're just going to call it one foot per millisecond. So. About six milliseconds of latency is all that a 32 buffer at 48,000 hertz is. Now, why am I saying a sample rate of 48,000 hertz? This 48K is really important because if we changed our console to be on the 441 clock rate, it's going to add 8% more latency to the round trip of Wave Super Act Performer. And in fact, it's going to make your Behringer Wing more latent for the audio's audio coming into the console and the audio going out of your console. So unless you have a very specific reason you're running your clock rate at 44.1, you should be running your clock rate at 48 thousand hertz. So that's why I always suggest to run it at 48,000 hertz because that's going to get your, your least amount in latency on the input to the output and especially with waves as well. 
So if we go and change our buffer size to 64, now the round trip latency is 7.12 milliseconds. So just a little bit more, but remember our CPU usage over here is going to go down as this buffer size increases. So if we change it to 96, this measures in at 8.5 milliseconds, 8.48 milliseconds, which is again, eight and a half feet, but we are getting a little bit more latent as this goes on. So if we go and change this to 128, then our latency is 9.8 milliseconds. If we change it to, to, let's see, if we change it to 192, our latency is 12.48 milliseconds. This is 12 and a half feet now. It's getting farther away. If we go and change this to 256, our latency now is 15.15 milliseconds, so about 15 feet. If we change this to 512, our latency is now 25.8 milliseconds. Now at this point, we definitely can't use this for any monitoring situation. So at this point, this is very latent. So 25 feet is a very far distance for audio to travel. So you can imagine that your vocalist is standing 25 feet away and they're hearing their vocal in their head and then also hearing their vocal 25 milliseconds later. So in this case, if you had to be running a buffer size of 512, I would suggest you separate out your monitor channels to not be using waves and then have maybe a du duplicate channel that you're running waves on. So we can basically double patch this input. So say we had vocal one coming in on local one, we could then patch that local one to channel one and again, patch that local one to channel two. And then we could have waves being inserted on channel two and our monitors being from channel one. Now this is a really helpful way of doing things because if you have a large buffer and a large latency that you're having to deal with, we can still have the waves processing and we can have near instant monitoring for those who are using in-ears, especially in-ears. This is important. So we can use that same, that channel one for our monitors for the band and our channel two for the front of house mix that the audience is hearing. If we then go up to 1024, our buffer size is 47 milliseconds. If we then change this to 2048, our latency is 89 milliseconds. Now that's a really long time, but if you're running broadcast, what's interesting about this is video is always going to be more latent than audio. Audio will always be ahead of video. I have never experienced at any point in my career where audio was more latent than video, meaning that audio is always going to be ahead of the video. And so most of the time, there's about one to five frames of latency on video, depending on, on the big systems that are there and all of the video processors that it has to go through with the board and the switching. And most churches that I find have a latency of about three frames on average. Now, three frames at what frame rate? So this is important because the frame rate actually can change the milliseconds of latency we have. So if we have 59.94 frames per second FPS, then our latency at 59.94 is 16.6 .6 milliseconds. Now that's just one frame. So if you had say three frames, three times 16, now 16.6 .6 milliseconds doesn't seem like that much, but if you have three frames of latency with your video that you have to get your audio to match up with the video, that actually comes out to just shy of 50 milliseconds. Now 50 milliseconds of latency happens to be around the same time as your buffer size of 1024. Now that's really interesting, but if you have an older system that's running 29.97 frames, then your latency per frame is 33 milliseconds. So if you had three frames of latency, that's almost 100 milliseconds of latency.
Now, if you are one of the fancier ones that's running at 24 FPS, there is an even greater latency. And 24 FPS happens to be 41.6 milliseconds of latency. Now three frames of that is going to be 124 milliseconds. Now some video systems are definitely going to be faster than three frames, but for the most part, if you're running these things and you find that your video is latent behind your audio, then we need to add latency to our audio to match those two things in time, which you can actually use this for your benefit if you're running Wave Super Act Performer. For instance, if we did happen to have an older system that was running 29.97 or that was running 24 FPS, we could definitely get away with using 1024 or even 2048 on our buffer size to get the most processing out of our computer and happen to match up our latency between our audio and our video. So that's why I was saying don't get too discouraged with some of these numbers that I'm pulling up here. Now, what about using this live with front of house? Well, I find that anything less than 10 milliseconds, your audience really is not going to notice anything. Now, there's going to be some purists out there that says that they will probably notice something. But if you go and sit in a big room and listen to someone talk, and then you all of a sudden hear that 10 milliseconds later, if you're in the front row, you definitely might be hearing some weird things going on. But the majority of your audience isn't in the front row. The majority of your audience is hearing that speaker through the PA, not directly from that speaker on stage. They're hearing it through the PA. So adding a little bit of latency, say 10 to 15 milliseconds, is not going to change the game for the people in the audience. So I find that if I'm running front of house that I can get away with about 10 to 15 milliseconds, no problem, which would be putting me at a buffer rate of anything under 256. Now, if you are using monitoring, we want to make sure that the latency is as small as it can go. So if you do happen to have a different front house desk than your monitor desk, and some churches out there do, then that's going to be great because then you can dial in waves for front of house and not have to worry about the latency that's added for those musicians that are up on stage. Now, if they are running floor wedges, you can definitely get away with a five millisecond delay with that buffer size of 32. But once you add in-ears, then you really have to be careful because the more latency that you add, the weirder it's going to sound for the musician. So if you happen to have a really good relationship with those musicians, you can ask them to try this out. And if you want to try this before you purchase Wave Super Act Performer, you can do this on your console. You can go and delay one of the channels that your band is using, and you can actually go and dial in 1.8 meters. And this is going to be roughly six milliseconds of delay. Once you do that, turn on delay. And then have your musician go and talk into their microphone and try it out. And if they like it or they don't even notice, then go for it. And know that you can run a sample rate of 32 on Wave Super Act Performer with your console, and they won't even notice. Once you dial in a little bit more, though, they might notice. So it's really going to be apparent with in-ears. It's not going to be as bad with floor wedges. So I hope this video was helpful for you for really defining what the latency is round trip with the Behringer Wing and Wave Super Act Performer using the USB card on the back of the Behringer Wing. If you do happen to have any questions, please put those in the comment section below. Also, if there's a video that you're hoping that I will make on the Behringer Wing, Waves, really anything that's out there, please put that in the comment section below as I'm always reading through those comments to find videos that are going to be helpful for you. If you haven't already, make sure to check out my website at drewbrashler.com. Otherwise, I hope you have a great day.